You know guys, after last week's episode of Solo Hustling, everybody told me that this week's episode was gonna blow my mind. And guys, the moment is finally here. The Blood Red Commander Egris is here in all its glory. And bro, listen, if you're not watching solo leveling right now, you're out of your goddamn mind. You are missing out for real. This week felt like a month. We were all trying to get through the week so that we can witness this episode and A1 Pictures did not let us down. I swear I couldn't contain my excitement during this episode. Bro, this episode made me arise. Oh wait, that's next week. <laughs> The episode begins with Sung Jin Woo and he's about to go on the job change quest and this episode just answered one of the questions I had about last week which is that the job change quest is actually optional unlike other quests. Jin Woo knows that this quest is probably going to be more difficult but the big Woo ain't no sucker he decides to take on the quest anyway what could possibly go wrong. As soon as he walks into the dungeon the system immediately removes his ability to use potions and his recovery and that's when I knew things were about to get real. He meets it's a night and they both start swinging but none of Jin Wu's attacks do anything to it because its armor is impenetrable and it's actually crazy when you think about it because the knights really shouldn't be that much of a threat to him at this point. Jin Wu realizes that the dagger isn't going to work so he just rips the thing apart with the help of his fatal skill strike. Jin Wu fights off more knights and he's even fighting off assassins and mages this time as well. The thing that was so interesting about this quest was that the enemy types were all the same ones that he's already fought so far. He was essentially putting all of his skills to the test and it was great to see how much he's matured in battle by putting his knowledge to good use while fighting all of these things. It's almost like the system is teaching him to equally level up his stats because it was easier for him to deal with the knights and the assassins but not the mages because bro doesn't have the intelligence levels for that. Regardless of that he defeats all of them and acquires some invisible armor as well as other items but all of that was just a warm up for the real fight. Jin Wu pulls up to the throne room but he feels a savage presence in the air and Bro, bro. The big man himself, Igris, shows up and fam, what an entrance. The music, the way the camera panned up revealing the dungeon boss gave off a sense of epicness, intimidation and this guy just looks badass, okay? You immediately felt devastating power of Igris and listen, Jin Wu has faced tough threats before in the form of human and beasts but Igris was just unparalleled when it came to its strength. This thing was cutting through stone pillars like they were made of tissue and bruh, I'm not even gonna lie, I was even surprised that Jin Wu was able to block the strikes with just his dagger. It's not just his strength that was the problem but it was also his speed which made him even more dangerous than the knights. Bro it's so bad that even Jin Wu acknowledges that Igris is just built different and the weapons weren't gonna work on him. The funniest part of this episode was when Jin Wu put away his weapon and Igris was like oh we doing hands? and removed his cape and dropped his weapon like Igris is a true gentleman proving that chivalry ain't dead. We need to step our game up for this. But lord have mercy, Igris is even more brutal without any weapons. This thing was so raw and Jinwoo was getting f cooked. I couldn't believe it. There was not one moment in this episode where Igris looked less detailed and on top of that the camera work was fucking impressive. Heckable. The camera angles, the storyboarding, the tracking shots were just marvellous. Like seriously, it's like each time Jin Wu levels up, so does the animation. And for all of my soccer girl bros, we were eating good. But it's the fight choreography for me which was just so good that it got me sinning. The choreography was jaw dropping. And the way Jin Wu used his dash skill to try and attack Egris, but each move was being countered was just so fire. Like that scene went hard. The fight scenes were so fluid and smooth, but not only that, the combos that Egris was using on Jin Wu were absolutely disgusting. Disgusting. That was so disrespectful. Bro was getting ragdolled. I know I'm not the only one who was laughing when I saw that. Like I just love how throughout this fight, Igris didn't say a word. He let his fist do the talking. Listen man, I love Jin Wu. That's my boy. We go way back. But man, he needed this ass whooping. Because even though he struggled against past opponents to gain his strength, his life hasn't really been in legitimate danger since the first two episodes. But against Igris, that same fear he had before returned. The only difference is he was powerless then, but he is 
is it now? Just as Egress was about to deliver the final blow, Song Jin Wu remembers that paper and he stabs Egress in the eyes and rushes him and he repeatedly kept stabbing him and bro the voice acting and the pencil sketch, the pencil sketch was so awesome. I was quite surprised that Jin Wu defeat Egress in this episode. I thought this fight was gonna go to at least two episodes. But just when we all thought the job quest was over, the system was like nah chief, this shit's just getting started. The system is such a troll. Jin Wu put his life on the line against Egress and that wasn't even the beginning of the quest. He starts getting swarmed by hordes of knights and his buffs were being restricted and he has to survive for as long as possible. He loses another teleportation stone a second time. So yeah, he's f In other news, Jong In and a few other S-rank hunters are heading back to Jeju Island with the approval from the chairman and we learn a few things. Number one, that Jeju Island is public knowledge. Number two, that whatever happened on the island could have possibly caused the hunters to gain a bad reputation since Jong In and the chairman had to sway public opinions to their side. And number three, this is just an expedition on the island, not a full on raid so I just hope that nobody dies. We also finally see Jin Ho's brother Jin Sung and he discusses building his hunter guild and this man was just flexing in front of his dad just to shit on his younger brother. Most of the S rank hunters in Korea turned him down so he went overseas to recruit. He suspects that Jin Ho probably has a guild or something and it's kind of funny because Dong Su's name was mentioned in this interaction. He's after Jin Ho. It's going to be an interesting entanglement to say the least whenever he shows up. And guys what can I say this episode was absolutely phenomenal. Best episode of the series. In fact I would go as far as to say this is the best action episode of 2024 no doubt i have to give flowers to the animation team to the director and the storyboarders in particular to yoshihiro kano he did god's work with this episode there are only a few anime which can get me hooked enough to read the source material but i probably have to add solo leveling to that list because since day one i've been invested in this series so much and it's not just jin Wu's character and growth but it's the world and the mystery behind the system which i just need to know more about after next week's episode i'm definitely reading the manual before part two is released because i can't wait that long guys thank you to everyone who took out the time to watch this video if you're a manual reader or an anime only let me know down below what your thoughts on the episode are if you enjoyed the video please like share subscribe the last episode for part one is next week and guys i'll see you there man stay blessed